What's uh, your question? My question is, uh, my question is, what is the clear cut evidence that we can pray uh, missing prayer at prime mission time? Uh, uh, because prophet uh, say that uh, uh, missing prayer pray uh, immediately, but uh, there is doesn't mean that we can uh, pray at prime mission time because. There is not any evidence at the time of Prophet that anyone doubts this. First of all, there isn't a crystal clear-cut evidence for everything in life. There are general evidences mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah, and there are evidences that are stemmed and taken from the Quran and the Sunnah, known only to scholars. And this is why we have the difference between those who know and those who do not know. Allah says in the Quran, say, do those who know are equal to those who do not know? Of course not. Therefore, you cannot understand a lot of these things if you don't have knowledge. If you did not study Arabic, read the Quran, know the tafsir, know the fiqh. If you do this, Sometimes it's ambiguous to you. Even then you may not find it and you have to refer to scholars. What do scholars say? Scholars say that we have what seems to be conflicting evidences. And this is not possible in Islam. The Prophet says, والسلام, do not pray after Asr until the sun sets and do not pray after Fajr until the sun rises. Times of prohib prohibition. But at the same time, he said, والسلام, when you enter a masjid, do not sit until you pray two rak'ahs. So one says, hmm, what should I do? Here he says, it's haram to pray. And here he says, it's haram to sit. So if I come after Asr prayer, and there are two or three hours till Maghrib, should I s just stand there waiting? Or should I uh, uh, disobey him and sit? So these look conflicting but the scholars of Islam who spent their lives studying Islam and teaching it came and said no wait 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 you can't just judge it like this without looking at the evidences any layman would say no I don't do this because he doesn't have knowledge people like Imam Shafi'i for example and this is what Sheikh Ibn Ithameen said may Allah have mercy on his soul Asking questions, number one, if I came after Asr prayer, is this time of prohibition? Yes or no? Yes. I remembered that I did not pray Fajr prayer. I overslept and I went to work for, for totally forgetting it. And now I remember it. Question, can I pray my missed Fajr at the times of pro prohibition? Answer of definitely. All scholars of all schools say yes. Thank you. Situation number two. After Asr prayer, if there was a sun eclipse, which is not usual, but hypothetically, are we allowed to pray? Of course. This is the time for it, and you have to pray. But this is a time of prohibition. No, 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 no. this is exempted. Thank you. After Asr prayer, they brought a corpse of a deceased Muslim. To be buried. Can we pray Janazah prayer or have to wait three hours until sunset? No, of course we have to bury him as soon as possible. We can pray. Zakallah khair. And the list goes on. So what do we understand? We understand that to combine evidences without dismantling one over the other or disregarding one for the sake of the other. In order to combine the evidences, we say that the time of prohibition after Asr and after Fajr is when a person wants to pray voluntary prayers that has no reason, no legitimacy. I don't have anything to do better than to pray. I just want to pray six rak'ahs for the sake of Allah or two rak'ahs for the sake of Allah. We say, no, sit down. This is a time of prohibition. But if the prayer has a valid reason, then you may pray it 
at the times of prohibition, and Allah knows best.